Edgar Wright. He's a director who I feel both doesn't and does need introducing at the same time. He's sort of in the same calibre as someone like Wes Anderson. Everyone who has heard of him most likely loves his work and thinks he's one of the best filmmakers working today. I agree. But his films don't pull in the numbers at the box office. What he does, it's great, but it's at a much lower scale than a lot of popular filmmakers work at today. I feel like I'm just going to be repeating myself from what I said in my Tarantino video. He has a really vivid style that is so hard to imitate that he's basically the only person who could do it. So here we go, let's rank every Edgar Wright movie. He's made 5 films so far with Last Night in Soho due to come out this year. So where will I start? Well, I'd probably start with... Scott Pilgrim vs The World I want to start off by saying that in my Tarantino video I feel like I didn't spend enough time talking about the merits of the films lower on the list. So let me reiterate, Scott Pilgrim is not a bad film, it's a solid 7 out of 10. All of the films on this list are either good, great or near on perfect. So when I'm listing all the reasons Scott Pilgrim's on the bottom of this list, that's not me saying I don't like it, but only justifying why it doesn't deserve to be higher than these other films. So that out of the way, let's get back into it. To prevent repeating myself over and over with every film on this list, with every Edgar Wright movie the best part is always the direction. I could say that for all of these films. He has an ability to fill the frame with so much detail and life, and makes use of every aspect of film from editing to sound, and he's probably the best director at visual comedy that I've ever seen. Because of this, every Wright movie demands further viewings because none of them are even close to surface level in the direction. Scott Pilgrim is no exception, but I feel like this more than any other Wright movie demands you to be in a certain mood before you can watch it. It's so light-hearted and out of this world that nothing really matters, that's the success and the failure of this film. While it makes it really fun to watch, if I want to watch a film with a story that I'm going to be invested in, I'll be putting on any other Wright movie before I pick this one. But I'd still recommend it to anyone who hasn't seen it without a shred of doubt. It's full of great comedic moments and it's one of the best portrayals of angst I've ever seen. One could say it's the Mean Girls of the 2010s. Now, don't say this channel doesn't provide new and innovative thoughts on cinema. Every character, even the bit parts, stick out like a sore thumb, but in the best way possible. I'm going to remember this film for years and years from now. Hot Fuzz Scott Pilgrim was the only film I felt comfortable putting at the bottom of this list. Everything from this point out feels almost impossible to rank. I love all of these films and it pains me to put Hot Fuzz second to last. But again, at this point, it just comes down to which of these movies I'm likely to watch over the others, and well, there's three movies I'd be more likely to watch than this. Still though, I can't sing the praises of this movie enough. Every film from the Cornetto trilogy is characterised by being a spoof of a specific genre, while also being an amazing film within that genre. They're also all filled with foreshadowing, callbacks, payoffs, and details upon details that just hurt your brain they're so clever. Edgar Wright is a great writer on his own, but when you pair him with Simon Pegg, it doesn't get better. So why is this my least favourite entry from the trilogy? Well, I think it goes on for a little too long, the final gun battle especially feels like it never ends, and the action scenes are way more shaky and hard to make out when compared to the rest of his films, and... Well, I'm not going to pretend it's any more flawed than that. We're talking about the tiniest of margins when comparing these movies, so the smallest of flaws is going to define whether a film will go up or down on the list, that's all there is to it. There's a lot of funny moments here, the cast is always impressive with Edgar Wright, but this one pulls big name English stars from left, right and centre, and it's just a whole lot of fun. Baby Driver this is the once upon a time in Hollywood of my Edgar Wright list. When I first watched it a couple of years ago, there was no doubt it would place right at the bottom of this list. But now that I've rewatched it a couple of days ago, I love it. Don't worry, I'm not going to spend half of the video talking about my mixed feelings on this movie. I really do love this. For whatever reason, it just didn't charm me the first time I watched it. But upon a second viewing, this went straight from a 6 out of 10 to an 8. I think I felt that the characters didn't have a whole lot of depth, and while I don't think that's necessarily untrue for some of the supporting cast, Wright has a way of writing characters that makes them really entertaining to watch without them needing a whole lot of fleshing out. I couldn't tell you a whole lot about John Hamm's character, but what I could tell you is that he's an absolute badass. Baby is one of the more unique protagonists I've seen in an action film. The first time around I missed quite a lot of the details about his character, but I soon came to realise that his whole deal was that he remixes everything he sees and hears into his own life, which makes for some funny moments. You and I are a team. Don't feed me any more lines from Monsters, Inc. It pisses me off. And some nice emotional payoffs. <laughs> You don't belong in this world. 
I'm sure you all know about the film's gimmick where every action scene moves in time with the music, and I'm going to be the thousandth person to say this, but it makes for an extremely fun and satisfying watch. But what's more impressive is how he can use music to inform characters and plot, even using it to create tension in certain sequences. My problem with this movie is that again, I think the final action sequence goes on for a little too long, and also Jamie Foxx is kind of unconvincing as this lunatic killer that he says he is. But if you want a really fun movie with some entertaining characters, some good romance, some good action and a few surprising moments, this is your movie. The World's End The World's End is I think the least talked about Edgar Wright film and I've never understood why. It's got everything a good Wright movie offers with another geniusly written script, some well shot and well edited sequences, great music, funny and exciting action and so much good comedy sprinkled throughout. In my opinion, this is the funniest Wright film. It really is British humour though, probably his most British film, but hey, I think that only falls in horses and the in-betweeners are comedy gold, so that shows how stereotypically English I am. What draws me a lot to the film, other than the comedy, is the characters. We get a lot of time with the main five. The alien plot doesn't even get going until about 45 minutes in, which should be boring, but the cars here convey the perfect mix of comedy and drama that keeps me hooked in every second of the runtime. This thing actually has a really emotionally powerful climax, it's really good. Just so I can shut up about the comedy, I want to say that this has some of the best delivery I've ever seen, making moments that probably wouldn't be very funny with lesser performances highlights of Wright's discography. Gary thinks we should keep up with the crawl, because they know what we're doing, but they don't know that we know what they're doing. And basically, no one else has a better idea. So fuck it. <laughs> This most likely comes from Wright's infamous perfectionism on set, and I've held off on saying this for long enough, but you can feel his perfectionism coming through the screen in every one of his films. This is the third time Wright and Simon Pegg have collaborated on the screenplay, and it's just magic every time. Besides the small details that filled the other films in the Cornetto trilogy, this time they so meticulously crafted it so that running gags can turn into crucial plot points so naturally that it makes me jealous that I probably could never write anything so clever. I feel like saying this more than any other film on this list. If you haven't seen The World's End, please give it a watch, you won't regret it. Shaun of the Dead. It is a crime how underrated this movie is. It's going to sound like I'm exaggerating when I say this, but I think this is one of the best screenplays ever written, to the point where every line of dialogue has meaning. Whether that's to inform character, to set something up, to pay something off, to foreshadow something, to make a joke, or inform plot. You could go through the script word by word and be able to pull a whole load of meaning out of like 95% of the lines in here. That same detail is present also in the direction, I know, big shock, but just look at this. Sean, hog lumps. Oh look, hog lumps. That tells you everything you need to know about Sean's character development through the movie from being battered by life to taking control of it. A spoof movie has no right to be this good, but Wright and Peg have a perfect grasp of how to make it work. The threat here, while the characters react to it in a spoofy way, is real. I first saw this film when I was like seven, and I shit myself. And I was a hard kid, all right? But I'm getting off topic. This story is filled to the brim with character, heart, comedy, care, horror, and attention. To top it all off, some of the acting here actually gives me chills. I can't fault a single aspect of this movie. If I had a gun to my head, I could not tell you something that I don't like about it. It's as simple as that. I've watched this film too much, probably in the 20s or 30s, and I have loved it every single time, even the time where I shit myself. And yet, I still feel like I haven't finished unpacking this movie. It'll probably be on in the background for the rest of my life. It's one of my favourite films ever made, and definitely my favourite Edgar Wright movie. So there it is, my Edgar Wright ranking. How many of you are pissed off that I put Scott Pilgrim at the bottom? But what about you guys? What are your favourite Wright films? Leave a comment below and click that like button for more videos like this, and I'll see you soon.